Hello everyone and welcome to Rudy's Retro Intel. On today's show we will be looking at this K-Pro 2 computer. This is a logable which is made out of metal so how logable it is I'm not sure but back in the day in the 80s, uh, early 80s, uh, late 70s the idea of having a computer you can carry around was a very uh, new and novel idea. Uh, this machine has a 9 inch diagonal, uh, you measure the screen diagonally, it's a 9 inch uh, green phosphorus screen has two floppy drives five and a quarter 190k i believe on each double-sided a single-sided double density it also comes with a key this keyboard which is a detachable keyboard and you can plug in the cable from the back of the unit using an rj11 cable this one here that plugs into there and plugs into the back of the unit so let's swing it the computer around to the back and take a look what you get with the K-Pro. So on the K-Pro computer um, we have obviously the handle for carrying it, this is the K-Pro 2 made by uh, Nonlinear Systems Inc. in California, USA. It has a 110-volt uh, uh, power adapter, on-off switch, a reset, hard reset for the computer. It has a ser one serial port, one parallel port, and an RJ11 connector for the keyboard. Uh, also has a brightness knob, and it has these uh, connectors on all four sides, which allows you to take the power cable and the keyboard cable that you can wrap it around the unit so you're not carrying extra cables that's all nicely put away and you just take the handle and go so let's get this on the bench and uh, turn it on and see what we can get from the K-Pro Now with the case open we can get a better look at the motherboard on this K-Pro 2. The K-Pro 2 has the 64K of memory over here using the wonderful brand of the MOS Tech chips would eventually need to be replaced because they're going to fail. Also the processor is a Z80 Z-Log uh, processor. Um, it's got a built-in ROM. It has control uh, control uh, logic for the floppy drive, which is built-in controller, serial parallel keyboard, and uh, what else we have? We have a cable here for the LED for the front panel, power and uh, power for the floppy drives. Now I've also made a change to this board. Let me just zoom in a little bit here so you can get a better view. And what I've added here is a 12 volt uh, mini fan. And uh, I've run off a cable, basically a splitter for the power, and I'm running for the uh, floppy drives, and I run the power off to the 12 volt fan. Now, why do I need the fan? The computer has lots of ventilation. However, when sitting in this uh, configuration with the top on, the heat builds up inside, and after about an hour, the monitor will shut off there's no picture nothing so by putting this fan in I found that cooling the inside helps and the monitor stays on for hours it works just fine so eventually I have to dig into the monitor logic to find out what is causing the overheating and the monitor to shut off so with this this setup uh, done uh, let's plug it all in and uh, see how it goes 
with everything plugged in now we will uh, boot up the K Pro now the K Pro computer uh, when you're booting it up do not boot with a floppy disk in the drive if you do then the drive the interference from the monitor can and will destroy your floppy disk so boot it up first and then put your floppy disk inside and close the door so let's give that a try And there we go. It's booted up into CPM. Uh, I'm going to put another disc in drive B, which uh, is some utility discs, uh, sorry, utility programs that uh, I found on the net. So we'll give some of them a try. This program is called Align, and what it does is it just flashes the K Pro 2 and the CRT adjustment, although you can't really see it on the camera. Uh, but it allows us to then adjust the screen uh, to fit properly, um, so display properly, sorry. And uh, from here, you can't exit, you have to reboot the machine. So right now, I'm going to reboot it, and you'll see it go to drive A and then back to drive B. And as you can see in this case I did not remove the floppy disk because the monitor is on and we can just hit the reset button and get back. Now that the system is rebooted let's go into the B drive again and uh, let's run some uh, diagnostics. Um, in particular I want to look at the memory So we are running a memory test. It's going to go through and uh, display any errors. Um, at this time, it doesn't seem like there be any errors for the high memory. Now, I apologize for the screen because uh, this setup isn't the best. And in a moment, I'm just going to show you the upgrades I want to do this machine, which includes making a better uh, adapter, or making an adapter to have a display externally. So let's look at the upgrades I want to do to the machine. So let's look at some of the mods I want to make to the K-Pro. One of them being this uh, small board I've designed. And what it is, it's a composite out for the K-Pro. It allows us to plug in the uh, horizontal, vertical sync and video and power from the K-Pro motherboard into this little board. And then from there, get composite out. Now I've already made one and tested it and it's working just fine in the K-Pro. I had to install a small uh, header on it, but that's fine. That took a few moments of soldering. Uh, this plugs into there. Uh, we have a, a separate uh, line for the vertical sync, which we have to plug in that way. And then we have an adjustable uh, potentiometer here and the composite out. So that's gonna be one of the things we're gonna see in the next video. And then I'll be able to properly show what the K-Pro can do on the video, it's the YouTube video itself. The next thing we'll be doing is I'll be removing the I'll be rem <clears throat> I'll be removing the five and a quarter inch floppy drive drive A, and we'll be installing this GoTech adapter. Now this GoTech unit um, I I purchased this uh, half height five and a quarter inch uh, drive bay holder for the the GoTech, and. Um, if you don't know what a GoTech is, it's basically it's a drive emulation. It allows you then to plug in uh, files or put in files on your USB key. You would plug it into the unit and then turn it on. And then from the knob or the buttons, you can select which program you want and it'll boot up off that. The um, interesting thing about this is that on the cable, when I built the cable, there is no twist. It's not like a IBM 
PC or PC clone that you need to have a twist in the cable. This plugs in directly into the motherboard. And then from here we go to the, oops, we go into the second floppy drive. So that'll be on the bottom. This will be on the top. Now to complete the uh, mod, well, if we put this in, we're going to have, <clears throat> if we put this in here, well, we're, we're going to have a blank spot on the top. So what I found is instead of buying a just a blank plate for the front, uh, which costs just as much, if not more, than this box I got from AliExpress. And what this is, it just mounts on top. So you would screw, you would put them in like uh, like so, and it would fill in the bay, the drive bay for uh, drive one or drive A. Now the nice thing with this is that once you have installed, you just press this button and the drawer opens up. You can actually then take your USB key when you're done with it. You can close it up, pop it in there, close the drawer and it sits in the case and you have to worry about losing the key or any other parts. If you want to put um, this board in it, you can just wind up the cables and stick it inside. And then next time you open up the unit, open up the keyboard, push the button, pull out the drawer, take your USB or your tools or whatever you want to put in there and plug it into your GoTech. So that will be on the next video, these mods. And um, I'm debating if I should also do the modification for the turbo button. Now, the K-Pro 2 is at, runs at 2.5 megahertz and we can add a turbo switch on it, we'll bring it up to five megahertz. So I'm still debating we should be doing that on the, the next video, or I might do a third video with that mod on it. Also, at the same time, I'll be adding a reset button on the front of the unit. There. Because when you have to reset the computer, you have to reach in the back. You have to get up, reach in the back, press the button, sit down and do your work, reach in the back. If you have the button on the front, it just makes it easier to use and spend less time, you know, doing the exercise of getting up and down. So that will be another option uh, I'll be putting on to the K-Pro. Now for your purists out there saying, oh my goodness, you shouldn't do all these mods and all that stuff. And and it's great. If you want to have a computer as stock as you like it, that's great. Um, however, this one, I figured it'd be fun to add all these cool mods and uh, make it more user friendly. So stay tuned for the next videos. Hopefully, hopefully you like this one and uh, you'll give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe. And a big thank you for all my subscribers and current viewers like you. You made this uh, journey for, for me uh, fantastic. Uh, I'm getting close if, uh, to 500 subscribers, which is amazing. I, didn't, I never thought I would reach this level. But again, thank you. And thank you for viewers like you for watching. And we'll see you next time. Take care.